Hello, my internet fans! Welcome to the latest episode of the Stat Boy Rants. That's me, I am the Stat Boy, and I'm finishing up, or I've already had, or whatever you want to call it, my Easter break. I'm here at the at the Casa de Taylor, actually. We're having a wonderful Easter celebration. I hope you all had a great Easter, you know. I hope you hid the eggs and had the Easter ham and saw the Easter bunny and all that good stuff. Sorry that I haven't been ranting lately, but who knows what the real reason is. I really don't know, but I'm here now anyway. So let's get started with the rant like we always do. It has been two weeks since sadly we lost Mr. Paul Bearer, and now Mr. Vince McMahon has decided, well, I'm going to throw this into the story. You all remember, Taker was in the ring paying homage to his fallen manager, and here comes CM Punk, being true to his name, a punk, and he interrupted and stole the urn. Big mistake. He kind of got his at the hands of Kane, but, you know, He's holding on to that thing like it's the, like it's like it's a piece of gold or whatever or who knows what, and that's just wrong, folks. I'm sorry. You don't you don't do that. I mean, it's just not cool, man. I mean, yeah, you're keeping the memory alive, but you're also defaming it. Not cool. Punk, I hope you get yours at Mania because let's face it, you know who you are, and, and that's all the way around. Uh, thoughts and prayers go out to the Flair family. Uh, squirrel! Squirrel? Oh, there is a squirrel. Yeah, there goes a squirrel. Right over there. <laughs> a literal squirrel. It finally happened. He's behind the tree. There he goes. This is great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come back on me. Okay, so, see, uh, we were talking about this. See, out, out here at, at, at Casa de Taylor, there are two dogs, Cinder and Shadow. There are four cats, Missy, Punky, Sushi, and Bandit. But Bandit's off and about. We have no idea. And we have squirrels. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Anyway, again, thoughts and prayers out to the Flair family. His son, Reed, was found dead. Uh, let's hope it wasn't drugs, but you never know with, with, with high five celebrities. So, Mr. Flair, I'm sorry you lost your boy, you know. Haven't heard anything from Flair like you lately, so I don't know what's going on with that. Also, if you noticed a couple posts, I have gotten rid of my smoking skull belt that was autographed by Steve Austin. I had to get rid of it. If you're paying attention, I have a copy of his book, To Be The Man, Woo! autographed by Ric Flair. It's on eBay. If, it hasn't, if, if no one has bought it now, it's on eBay. Go and buy that, and I will send you an autographed copy of Ric Flair's which comes with an interesting story. Everybody wants me to tell this, this story about Ric Flair. So we're, we're going out. It was, at a, it was at the Walmart. We went down to the Walmart. And um, this was when I was doing the wrestling book. Not the one that I'm working on now, but it was just who beat who, for what title, where, what city, what date, how long they had the belt. And at that point in time, I even put the arena where it happened. And so I went up to Ric Flair, and I think it was for the U.S. title. And I went up to him, and first I, I, I shook his hand, and I said, you know, thank you for what you've done in wrestling. You're, you're a genius, you're a god, you're whatever. And he had this smile on his face like that, that he does, you know, kind of like when he was telling a story at the Hall of Fame. And I asked him, I said, may I ask a question about you and Ricky Steamboat. He goes, oh, what about what you want to know? I go, what arena did you beat him for the title? And he's throwing out St. Louis, Denver, New York, Pennsylvania. And he's throwing out every city that he traveled with, with Steamboat, but he didn't give me the answer. And it's like, oh, Mr. Flair, you're killing me here. And it's like, I wanted an answer, but I didn't get it. And then, and then the joke is, just give me the book. It's like, because there were a long line of people. And, and like I said, you didn't get that much time with Flair. He just went, next, next. Me, I'm trying to get information from him. Next. It was just, just give me the book. Well, no, I did not. I, oh, yeah. 
Okay, Mr. Flair, I'm very sorry about your boy. You know, hope you get through it and all that good stuff. Adam Pierce getting a TNA gut check. Now, I'm not sure if this is gonna go up before or after, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I hope you get in and I hope you beat the crap out of Joey Ryan. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be great? See, Adam Pierce kick Joey Ryan's ass. I would love to see that. Because on the indie scene, I don't really know if uh, if that if that ever happened. Because I think they were in the same stables or they were on the same team or whatever. I don't know. But, you know, Adam, Adam, man, you, you. Adam Pierce is the new Ric Flair. I'm sorry, guys. He wears the robe and he held that title for a reason. In fact, here's a story about Adam Pierce. What? When I met him, the one time I met him, um, Renegade had his his NWA title, and so we took a picture. I held the belt, I put it on my shoulder, I, and he had a beer in one he had a beer in one hand and the belt in the other. <laughs> and so we took the picture, and he kind of went for the belt. He goes, "Can I take a look at it?" Now it was a it was a replica belt, of course, but it wasn't the real belt. And I kind of held a little bit too close to it. And, you know, because one, it's not my belt, it's Renegade's belt, so... And two, it's like, who are you again? What are you trying to do to me here? And he goes, I'm not going to steal it, I got my own to worry about. And it's like, okay, go right ahead. And at the end, he looked at it, he looked at the signatures on it, put it back on my shoulder, shook my head, and he said, God bless, which was very nice. So, Adam Pierce. Stick it out in TNA and kick some ass. Ah, let's see. What else is going on? Baseball season has started. Woohoo! Let me send out a shout out to Josh Hamilton, the newest angel. You better deliver this season, my friend. You are Albert Pujols Jr. Not so sure. And you know, they spent a lot of money to get Pujols in. And he didn't kick up. He didn't start kicking ass until the second part of the season. So I want to see at least two home runs every three games. Because because let's face it, Josh Hamilton, if you can hit four home runs in one game for Texas, you can do it for Los Angeles. Even though I still consider your own. Okay, let's get that out the way. Let's see what else. Uh, hopefully by now, Kobe Bryant has passed. Will Chamberlain on the all-time list. So yeah, the thing was when he was supposed to do it, which was last Friday night, he only needed four points. What's the matter, Kobe? You couldn't make a three-pointer or go and come. And I swear, man, Kobe Bryant has had so many injuries. It's like he rolls his ankle, he broke his nose at one point, had to wear one of those face, those Cody Rhodes-style face masks. And now he's got a bone spur in his left foot. He should be glad he's not going to play after the playoffs. He's got one year left on his contract, too. I don't know if he's going to resign after that. So, yeah. So, by now he's definitely passing. Now he's going to try and break Michael Jordan's point record. And he'll, that, that'll make him better than Jordan. But he's never going to be better than Kareem. Unless he resigns for two more years. Country music in the background. Woohoo! Okay. Now, the other part of my rant, which is the, the topic point, ABC has put together a, a diving show. It's called Splash. They dug up Joey Lawrence, whoa, to be the host. They took 10 celebrities, and if I can ramble them all off Kendra Wilkinson, Louis Anderson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Nicole Eggert, Keisha Knight Pulliam. What? Um, Chewy Bravo. He's from uh, the Chelsea Lately Show. Um, let's see. There's a. Uh, an extreme snowboarder, I can't remember his name. There was uh, Miss Alabama 2012, I can't remember her name. Uh, there, one of the uh, Detroit linebackers 
He has a very difficult name that I really couldn't even pronounce. And there was a Disney character, a Disney actor. He is the voice of Spider-Man. So these ten celebrities are going through. They went through six weeks of diving boot camp. And in the first episode, Keisha Knight Pulliam <coughs> got eliminated, and man, she looks hot in a bikini. Woo, she looks hot. In the second episode, Chewy Bravo injured his foot. He was standing on a, a board, and he injured his foot, and he can't dive anymore. And he was replaced by uh, the... Olymp uh, Team USA soccer when Team USA won, I guess, the World, the Women's World Cup. She was the one that ripped her jersey off and she celebrated that way. Mia. Brandy something. What's her name? Mia Ham. No, Mia Ham was the other one. Mia Ham was uh. the captain. This was the one she ripped her, her jersey off. Oh, yeah, so here's the concept of the show. They get one dive in front of a national television audience. There are two judges, both are Olympic judges or Olympic divers, and then the audience gets to put in their vote too. And they have four different platforms, three meter, five meter, seven meter, and 10 meter, which range from 15 to 33 feet. Uh, there's a three meter springboard and a five meter springboard. And they just do their dive. They do their dive and they get to get judged. Now, here's the thing. When I remember diving, they're supposed to jump, flip, twist, head first into the water with as little splash as possible. These guys, I haven't seen one dive like that. Now, I get that they're not professionals. I get that. They're all celebrities. Oh, and when they dive, their body is supposed to be perfectly straight, toes pointed forward, head down, arms out, not curved and all that. And what I remember is, is like if you're, if you're not straight or your body or whatever, you get less points. On the first episode, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar did a backflip off the three meter board and he got like an eight. But I think he even went feet first or whatever. I don't. The, the, it just didn't look like an Olympic dive. These guys are getting um, judged. I think more on their celebrity than more on their dive. And also their swimwear. Okay. Olympic diving is speedos for the men, one-piece suits for the women, and I believe they even wore a skull cap. When Nicole Eggert, or not Nicole, uh, Brandy, the uh, soccer player, did her dive, she had diamond earrings in her ears. It's like, ah, uh, okay. The guys are wearing trunks or board shorts or whatever you wear to the beach. Keisha Knight wearing a bikini. Now, I'm sorry, but, you know, diving in a bikini could cause a wardrobe malfunction. And, and Kendra's swimsuit, I mean, yeah, she did Playboy and all that, but she's looking like a runway model. She's got this one-piece bikini with this little thing right down the middle of her suit, which is hardly... It's like, it's like I'm just waiting for someone to rip their top off when they hit the water. Okay? The opening sequence also shows each celebrity as what they're best known for in the water in an underwater shot. So like Louis Armstrong would be on the edge of the pool with a microphone stand and a suit and he would jump in the water and he'd like tell a joke underwater. Or Kareem would be in his Laker warm-up suit with a basketball. And Miss Alabama would be underwater in a swimsuit because of a swimsuit competition, her sash, and a crown. Or or uh, the Olympics, or the Olympic, the uh, extreme snowboarder would have a snowboard under the water. The Disney XD guy would have a rock guitar under the water. It's like, this is the corniest thing I've ever seen. So when all the scores are tallied up, the two lowest divers go head to head, and the Olympic divers, oh, we have another squirrel. 
Oh, hold on, pause for a squirrel. I think that's the same squirrel. <laughs> this is great, man. Squirrel. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> two squirrels, that boy approved. So the, the final two go head to head. The judges get to eliminate somebody, and that's it. So it's kind of corny, but it's ABC. They're looking for reality shows. Whatever. I don't know who I want to win. It's corny, but it's kind of funny. So, so it's Splash. It's on just before Dancing with the Stars. You know. Squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> Same squirrel. That squirrel is definitely that boy approved. So, yeah. So, I think we're done with this episode now. I've ranted enough. I've, I've got... I've got chill time at Casa de Tango. I don't know about Follow me on, on Twitter at LBStatKid1977. Like my Facebook page on Facebook. Send me a note. Happy Easter. I hope you had a great Easter. I will see you all next time. WrestleMania is coming up, so we're going to do our prediction shows on WrestleMania weekend. Okay? Yeah. WrestleMania 29, New York, New Jersey, Sunday, April 7th. I will see you the next weekend with the WrestleMania stuff. Until then, as I always say, and because it's baseball season, Step Boy out! <laughs>